now it's time to get cooking with Chef Jason in our Daily Dish. <laughs> All right, Chef. Normally, we see you with your setup, and there's butter and there's bacon on your table, but not today. <laughs> so we're making some plant-based recipes, and you've been adding more of these to your menu. So tell us why. Well, you know, I'm, I'm totally changing it up. You know, I think uh, five years ago, if you uh, didn't have a vegetarian menu, a dish on your menu, it was normal, but now you have to. And I think the future is heading towards plant-based. We've got to embrace vegan. And uh, we're really starting to look for really unique ways to make this vegan food tasty. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, there's so many reasons why. People want to do it for the environment. People want to do it because meat is so expensive. And people want to do it for their health. Oh, yeah. So it makes a lot of sense to try and get more veggies into our diet and get more plant-based. So how do we start uh, the recipe you're going to make? I'm actually turning into a bit of a magician today because I want to take watermelon <laughs> and turn it into tuna. I know it sounds crazy, right? But um, the thing is, though, is we're trying to make things that they just don't. We've all had watermelon. It tastes great. But how do we add some exciting flavors to that, you know, if you can't eat tuna? Because, again, this is no dairy, no gluten, no nothing, right? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a big tuna, like um, tuna, see, already, watermelon, <laughs> and turn it into a nice slab like that, right? Uh, but then you need the glaze. And what I've got here is uh, a little bit of miso, uh, which is just that beautiful kind of uh, you know, Asian flavor that we're used to. Uh, a little bit of soy sauce, and you can get gluten-free soy sauce, so that's easy. Uh, a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar, and a little bit of grapeseed olive oil. All right. Uh, and of course, everything needs garlic. So we just put a little bit of garlic in there. Uh, but the idea is you just kind of mix this up. I'm actually going to take my whisk here. Uh, and what we're doing is we're going to flavor this, but give it those kind of like Asian flavors that we're used to when we're eating like a tuna sashimi. Um, and you simply are going to just pour this right over top of the tuna. Okay. The tuna. Now, I love it. You're really, you've really thing. gotten into it. Like oh. you believe in your <laughs> heart and soul that that is a tuna. It's a watermelon. We, and the way we you had cut this it. on the menu. <laughs> the way you cut it though, it's like a but, slab of tuna. That's amazing. But it's hilarious because we've had it on the menu playing around with it. And honestly, I'm going to the guys and saying, go grab me the watermelon tuna. And it's not <laughs> tuna, you know. But, um, but now we put a little bit of nori or seaweed on top. But here's the crazy thing is if I took this, I would never think that you would bake fruit. But we actually bake this in the oven Ooh. for 45 minutes to an hour at 300. And you think fruit would just melt, right, and disappear, but it doesn't. But here's the interesting thing. You know, typical watermelon, crunchy, firm, hard like that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, look what happens after 45 minutes in the oven. Does this not look oh. like a piece of tuna? It almost, Isn't yes. that insane? That could be trout. You know, that could be salmon. That could be tuna. It. That's incredible. It just changes the texture of it and just makes it, it gives you that kind of flavor that you, or the, the texture that you want from a piece of tuna. But now what you do is you can just simply slice this down and sit, look at this, look at this, isn't this crazy? And you just fan it out. But what I do is I've, I've got it right here, but we've served it with some little sesame seeds over top. But you could do a little bit of a wasabi creme fraiche over there. You could make sushi with this and actually do like a vegan sushi. Like it is so easy to make and it transforms it. And the flavor that comes out of it will just explode in your mouth. Like it's so flavorful. Isn't that cool? It's very cool. And I'm not going to lie, I was a little skeptical. I'm like, he's going to make the watermelon into yeah. a tuna. But the way it bakes so beautifully, it. it looks incredible. So let's go to your second recipe. You've got spiced panko fried broccoli cauliflower with kimchi sauce. Lay it on a chef. Well, this is, this is the one where everybody wants chicken wings, right? But we can't have chicken. And the thing is, it's really, when you think about chicken wings, it's more about the spices that are happening. So for me, first off, what goes into a chicken wing where you've got you know, your cayenne pepper, you've got your paprika, you've got your cumin, uh, you've got your cinnamon. So I've taken all those flavors, and I'm using panko breadcrumbs. Panko breadcrumbs just give you that nice crispiness. So I literally will put these into a, a food processor and blend them so you've got those spices right throughout the panko. You know, it just gives you that like, kind of chicken wing flavor. Uh, then I've taken broccoli. And I've just cut them into nice long spears like this. Left it quite a bit of stem on, you know, um, but because we're going to fry this. Uh, and then I just kind of put them into a bowl. And we need a little bit of oil here to help the actual crust kind of stick to it. So I just put a little bit of grapeseed oil on there. Um, and then I'm going to take these nice spicy uh, panko crumbs and just put them over top. Look at that. Already it just looks good. So you're making um, your broccoli and, and cauliflower you into chicken. That's going to be our chicken, right? Into chicken wings. 
Yeah, this is our chicken. This is our vegetarian chicken. So, you know, we're going to take this, instead of breading them with the egg and the flour, we're just letting it coat because it will, all the little pores of it will get in there. And if you, the more you want, you could bread them more, but just even push it in there, it's fine. But you're literally just going to take this now and throw it right into the deep fryer. Now, I've got some here that I've started. While that's cooking, though, the thing that I wanted to do is a nice, simple wing sauce. Mm. But, you know, we can go out and buy wing sauces, but we never know what's in there. Whereas if you buy kimchi, you know it's literally just fermented cabbage. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of got a unique flavor to it. So what I did is I took kimchi, threw it in the blender, and I literally just added some tomato, olive oil, maybe a touch of vinegar if you want. Um, but you've got an amazing wing sauce that's so flavorful. Bit of heat there. If you want a bit of hot sauce, you can add that in there. Um, and then I've taken cashews and just lightly toasted those, give them a little bit of a kind of a roasted flavor. And then of course you need your spice, so we got some chilies on there. So the last thing to do is to take our broccoli and cauliflower. Now look at this already. You want to char it, like literally crispy charred vegetables. Nice. And I, to be honest, would even go even more than that, but I think some people kind of say, oh, it's burnt, it's burnt. You know, but you, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the flavor of the sauce will work with it. And then we just add a little bit of that kimchi sauce on top of here. Um, and we just toss that up, and you end up with these beautiful substitute chicken wings. I mean, look how, when you see this, it's just so tasty. You know, you can see that spiciness that's in there, and then you literally just take your cashews, just sprinkle that right over top, and that then you got these good. hot chilies, and whether you want just a few or a lot, depending on how hot you want it. Um, but again, something that's nice and crispy, and this is also a base that you can use if you want to do a wrap and you want to do this and put it into a wrap and roll it up so you get that crispy texture, but 100% vegan. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. And listen, I'm all for evolution, but I would love to just queue up a Three Chefs from 2015 and see you three when we suggest a vegetable recipe or a vegan recipe and see the looks, your eyebrows go, vegetables? We would never. You know, I'll, and I'll then vegan, Jay, you didn't even go veggie, you went vegan. I'm, I love well, it. Trace, we, have a, we have an event here, we have an event in the fall that is 800 guests and we're doing food stations all over the property and 75% of them are vegan. So I had to do my research, <laughs> and I admit, I went around to different restaurants, and when I ate this food, I was like, wait a minute here, what's going on? And now, at least one night a week, Meg and I are eating, you know, plant-based recipes, because you gotta, you got to embrace the future. Yeah. Of course, it would be nice with a bit of bacon on top, but it we'll, would be. we'll talk about that. <laughs> right? Listen, I love to see it, Chef, and it looks delicious.